Welcome back to the Hotel Orloff. Episode 758. It is June the possibly the 8th, 2023. A date which will live in devastation and fear and destruction because in about four hours Hurricane Greta is going to strike here in the historic quaint community of rural retreat Virginia uh, category 7 hurricane and we haven't bagged we haven't uh, uh, boarded <laughs> we haven't uh, boarded up the windows yet ladies and gentlemen we because uh, we've been organizing comic books but you know what? We're not going to, you know, we aren't afraid of any uh, Category 8 hurricane here. We're going to head on back in and organize some more comic books, ladies and gentlemen. We don't got time for no stinking tor tornado, hurricane, earthquake, whatever you call them. Yes, indeed. We just keep working along steadily. Like those uh, gentlemen on the uh, cuckoo clock. Yes, indeed. All right, so we've got some organizing to do here in the uh, historic Hotel Orloff, formerly the Hotel Sprinkle. Pete the Cat, I was telling a story about you last episode about this uh, wonderful student that I had uh, years ago that named Pete. Um, she thought it would be cool to name him after the school's mascot, um, which back in the 1930s was a real dog named Pete. Uh, a bulldog that had been hit by a car like five, six times out there on College Avenue in Fort Worth, Texas. And uh, you notice that they always, the press always does this with people they like. They always, uh, presidents, you know, they wouldn't do it with Trump, but with Biden, they'll, they'll frame a picture it's, so the presidential seal is behind him, so it looks like a, a halo behind his head, you know. But they, you know, if if there was something like this behind Biden, they'd make sure they it looks like he's radiating light, because they love him so, because he's destroying the United States, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's make a call real quick and see how the hurricane is uh, going. <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, when's the hurricane supposed to hit? Uh, about two hours and 15 minutes. All right, well, that's just enough time to uh, uh, put some comics back in the boxes and, and time to uh, watch the scenic uh, hurricane. Oh, I mean, goodbye. <laughs> Should have said goodbye to that idiot. All right. Back to the... Uh, to the coal mine, ladies and gentlemen. All right, so how are you guys doing on this wonderful Thursday? Thursday is always a wonderful day. Uh, isn't it? It's just delightful. Okay, so uh, what would we be doing? We, we we're filing comics, okay? So... We're gonna file some uh, Lois Lane comics. Look at this wonderful monster. Even those AI bots couldn't create something so lovely. Look, he's uh, turned that uh, street light into a ring for Lois. Okay, so he's competition for Superman. This is uh, number 54. Let's see, where will we file? I always liked the Lois Lane comics. The art was always Fantastic, here's 51. Sorry, there's another copy of 51. Superman's girlfriends over the years. Lana Lang, Lois Lane, and Lori Lemuris there. How about that? Okay, so... Oh, that's out of order. That's 33. Okay, here's 51. These are out of order. What's going on? Okay. Oh, 
wow, what a great cover. Here's 47. Isn't that great? That is fantastic. I, I ought to make that into a painting. Uh, 47. Okay. So this one was 44. Or 47. 59. 59. Okay. So what is going on? Okay. This one with the, the statues. I've got three copies of that. 51 by accident. Um, 59. Uh, yeah, there was a great artist on this book, Kurt Schaffenberger. I, I loved his style. It's uh, it has just the right element of cartooniness. It, it's wonderful. It's like perfect. It's, it's kind of like why I like Maurice Severin's art. It, it's very similar to that. John Severin. Uh, C.C. Beck, these artists that I love, Ramona Fredon, 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 Fredon um, that did Aquaman, always have, have that similar style. It's not completely realistic. It has a little sense of whimsy to it. I have 44. This is a great cover um, from still the 10 cent era, but it's still the, it's the very end of the 10 cent era because I got the 10 cent real big. Okay, so that's 29, that's 44. This is um, 33. This is the one that was out of, out of order. And then this one is um, 54. So 51, 51, 54. These lowest lines are out of order. It's terrible. Here is 13. This may be my earliest lowest lane. I just got this one recently from... The famous Gotham City Comics in Mesa, Arizona. Um, I think he has a different address now. Yeah. Um, he just recently moved in December 14. If you're ever in scenic Mesa, Arizona, stop by his store. Since I don't have a comic store here locally, he's kind of become my local comic store, even though he's far away from Virginia. Um, 13, oh, I have 14. And I have um, 16. Some people that aren't very intelligent don't like Lois Lane comics, but, you know, you know, they, people all can't be uh, geniuses like us. Okay, that's the wrong box lid. Oh, that's not good. What the heck? Okay, this is Superman, and it goes to Tales of Suspense. Oh, okay. We've got some Tales of Suspense books to put in here. Where did I put those? Superman. Oh, no, no, no. This is... Okay, no, this is uh, so Jimmy Olsen comes in. Because I see what I do is I have Superman. Then I have Superman's. Then after Superman, I put Superman's girlfriend. So Superman, Superman's girlfriend, Lois Lane. And then I have. What a great cover. Superman's pal, Jimmy Olsen. So it's Superman, Lois Lane, then Jimmy Olsen. And then. My nose is like a congestion in my nose today. Uh, this is not real. This is a reprint of this 3D Superman, but it sure looks cool. Um, here's a Marvel um, pre-code horror comic. Isn't that great? If I ever have a comic wall, that'll be on the comic wall. Okay, here's uh, my earliest issue of Tales of Suspense. Behold Goom, the thing from Planet X. He's one of those great monsters. Okay, so then Tales of Suspense stopped being a horror title and became a superhero title. So here's um, the first appearance of the Black Widow, and she was still a villain. This is issue 52. This is a 
this is one of the big ones because Black Widow became such a popular character only to be destroyed by uh, Marvel Studios. They killed her off and uh, then they gave her a really bad movie. Or a mediocre movie, I guess. There, I have two copies of that because it didn't used to be valuable because I bought them before they made the movies. Um, then I have issue 54 with a little bit torn off the top. Um, issue 65, um, man, I wish I had more of these, there's 70, and there's 71, some people don't, the Iron Man collectors, well, they'll say, well, Iron Man number one, you know, but Iron Man number one came along after Tales of Suspense. See, the, the, the comic was doubled up. It was Captain America and Iron Man at a certain point in 68, 1968. Tales of Suspense became Captain America. He took over this title. Then Iron Man got his own comic. He started with issue one. But these are all the early adventures. And some people don't collect these because it's not Iron Man as the full title. You know, he's not on the cover of every issue. And, you know, it's just idiotic. 73, but these are the ones that were adapted into those Marvel superheroes cartoons in 1966. These are the the great ones, you know, look at that. Uh, so, I wish I had all of those. Those are still somewhat affordable because the, the people out there that buy key issues don't kind of ignore them, I guess. Okay, so... Where did I put the Tales of Suspense books? Man, I, I pulled them. Are they over here? No. Of course not. Are they over here? No. Okay. Wow. I pull the books to be more efficient, and then I don't know where I pull them to. Um, oh, here they are. Um, Here's a fake Tales of Suspense number 57. A tip off, if you're wondering, it doesn't say 12 cents, it says 3.99. It has the UPC code and the mar modern Marvel symbol. But other than that, it has all the original ads and everything. And uh, what, I just, what I just did was a comic book move, believe it or not. When you feel like you have something in your eye, you grab your upper eyelid, you pull it out, by the eyelashes and you put it over your lower eyelid and it, it kind of causes your eye to tear up and wash out something that's in your eye and where did I learn that from super friends on Saturday morning TV because Aquaman came out and explained if you get something in your eye how to do that eye move and that's where I learned that back in the 1970s because um, I used to have little public service announcements from the different superheroes to you know, tell you to cross the street and, you know, watch out for strangers and that kind of thing. Anyway, I'm putting the fake ones in with the real ones because, because I want to. <laughs> um, had all the fake ones um, separated and then I decided, ah, uh, what the heck. So, 52, I have two real 52s, I have a 54, and then I go to 60. I've got to get those issues. I really do care about those issues. That That's a comic I really... And then I just recently got... Okay, that's... The last one I have in this box is 86. And I just recently obtained issue 88 in a trade. Um, and... Therefore, 
I need to find the next box to know. Okay, so Amanda tells of suspense. Well, there's a box over there that says Tales to Astonish to Thor, but I don't think I would have. Let me check that box. Um, let me unhook you guys. I also need to file. Oh, I'm gradually getting this done. Okay, this box starts with Tales of Suspense. <clears throat> okay. So this 88 would be the first thing in this box, it looks like. I might be able to pull some out of this box and put it in this one. Okay, now, now this book, um, Tales to Astonish, doubled up the Hulk and the Submariner, and when it got, uh, this is issue 99, when it got to issue 102, it no longer was Tales to Astonish, Hulk took it over and it became the Hulk 102. So, people that don't know much about comics wonder, you know, there was a Hulk one through, I believe, six in the early 60s, then his comic stopped publishing. And then they started doing his adventures in the Tales to Astonish, a pre-existing comic. And then with 102, it became... But the early issues of Tales to Astonish don't have the Hulk in them. So people try to collect Hulk, and they get all confused, because... And, you know, really, this issue is earlier than Hulk 102, so to me, it should be more valuable. But, okay, we got Teen Titans. And then we got uh, Journey into Mystery, which is the where Thor started. What, do, what is it I'm needing to file here? Showcase, okay. Some Superman books. Okay, that... That's what I need. Okay. So it's a suspense. Okay. I better change this. Never write the titles of books on these boxes. It's because uh, things change. Not tales to astonish, tales of suspense to Thor. I need to, like, put one of these in front and in the back of each box. Okay, so that's that. Okay, so this box starts with... Um, Superboy number 90. It says still 10 cents. That means it's 1961 and it's about to become a 12 cent book at the end of the year. Here's 92. 10 cents in big letters. 95. It's 12 cents. Okay. 
This is Superboy, 80-page giant, issue number 10. It really should go under E for 80. Or some people just put numbers, uh, uh, books that have number titles, you know, at the beginning. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to put it in. Like, there, here's an, a Superboy, 80-page giant that's part of the numbering of Superboy. It's issue 129. I'll just put this one next to that one. I mean, technically, this is a different title. It's 80 page giant. It's very confusing. It doesn't matter. Uh, Superboy 112. I got this in a recent trade. In trade for my um, historic television program, Tomb of Terror, that I've been producing direct for uh, direct to video. Uh, there'll be uh, there'll be 24 episodes possibly by the end of today if I get go down there and start working on it. But there's 23 episodes right now, and uh, you know you pick up one or two a month, uh, you'll soon have a collection of it. Superboy 112. Well, I'm starting to get hungry. I haven't had breakfast yet. Okay, so I have 96. I really should have more of these. And then 114. Um, 112. Where it gets... These are great, but where it really gets great is it where is it adventure comics with Superboy and the Legion of Superheroes. But the Legion of Superheroes appear in some of these Superboy comics. This is uh, 150. You can tell it's... They're start the... The look of the comics is starting to change with the Neil Adams art. Um, okay, this is Superboy 136. Look at that. Well, the Superman's last name is L. Which basically means God. Elohim means God. And the, the two teenagers that created Super Superman, they knew that from, you know, their classes at the synagogue. They knew that, the, that what they were doing, why they called him Cal El. But anyway, uh, 150. Jerry Siegel, Joe Schuster, 156. That's 150. Okay, here's 152, which has been defaced by some kid. They painted him completely red. Oh, well, it's very Christmassy. I probably need an upgrade of that, that one. Yeah, how, yeah, 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 156, 150. Okay, and then after Superboy comes Superman, alphabetically. Here's a later issue of Superman, 209. Oh, and I have this. Okay. Superman, 207. It was this 30th anniversary issue, 1938 to 1968. Okay, here's 208. And then I go, oh, what a great cover, um, to 212. So 209 will fit in in between those. And... This 80 page giant number 11 of Superman. I want to keep it with my Superman books instead of. So I'll just I'll throw it in here. What is my earliest issue of Superman? You're probably asking. Oh, look at this uh, giant Superboy comic. It's not great. In between Superboy and Superman is Super DC Giant Love, Love 1971, that pop art.
Okay, my earliest Superman is a 10 Center Iowa. This is one of the ones I just got recently from Gotham City Comics. Um, 136. Okay. Followed by 138. One of those great gorilla covers that DC liked to do. DC editorial staff said, do you want to sell comics? Have a purple cover, have a gorilla, or have dinosaurs on the cover. That's what sells. Those issues that we were, they have a cover like that, the kids eat them up. So you see a lot of DC comics from that era that way. Okay. So, I have to file this showcase comic. Okay. Where does this lid go? Batman to creatures? Oh, that goes over there. All right. I decided to move those creatures on the loose to the Marvel Hoarder box after all, after the last episode ended. Um, the okay, showcase. Where would showcase be? Oh, in that box. like a Rubik's Cube the way I have to move these boxes around to get where I need to be. I need to move all this. I, uh, in sixth grade, we had to do, we had to interview someone that was in the career that we wanted to be, and I wanted to be a cartoonist. And the teacher said, well, my son is a cartoonist. He does uh, cartoons for the newspaper. So in sixth grade, I called him up. I don't think I recorded it. I didn't have a tape recorder at that point. But I wrote down notes. You know, I asked him all these questions. I, I did a report on him. I wonder if I still have that. But I do have what he sent me afterwards, this artist. It says, Bill Stokes to my friend Kenneth Weinert. Thanks for the call, and I hope to see you soon. Keep on cartooning. So his name is Bill Stokes. I should look him up on Google. This would have been in 1976, possibly early 77. I need to put that up on the wall. Um, yes, indeed. That was sixth grade. stop filming this show I'll go down and see what Alex Jones is up to oh boy okay this box good see I still I have these uh, so now it's this showcase I got those at Lone Star Comics that's how they what they used to use in the store they would print extras and they would sell them to you as customers these professionally printed little plastic dividers for make your comic collection look sharp. And I'd buy issues of Showcase because they were generally affordable. It was a tryout comic, basically, and um, the people that are the key collect they didn't have that word key back in the 70s when I was buying these comics, but um uh, people that have always been like that, that just want the important issues, they didn't want a lot of the issues to showcase. But to me, I thought they were cool. Tommy Tomorrow of the Planeteers. 
This is uh, number 47. And the one that I need to file here is, um, wow, it's number 46. It just happens to ow, be the issue right before it. So that's a coincidence. And then the next one I have is number 51, I Spy, which predates the TV show I Spy, but I don't think it has anything to do with the TV show. It's just maybe the TV show got their name from it. It's kind of like the Lost in Space, uh, uh, Space Family Robinson comic. It's not really exactly like the show, but you can, but obviously it was inspired by it. And uh, there were great things, but you know, people that collect key, only key issues and, all, and get them slabbed, they don't care. But you know, uh, and they don't even care about opening their comics, they just wanna have them uh, slabbed just because they only wanna look at the covers. So that that's fine, that's, that's great. Um, this is the first appearance of the Inferior Five. Pretty sure it's the first appearance. I mean, it's telling you who they are, so it's obviously first appearance. They were, um, it was Marvel trying to do a parody comic like, Mar uh, I'm sorry, DC trying to do a parody comic like Marvel's Not Brand Ech. In fact, they even use Ech. That started with mad, the eh, which is a sound effect, the sound effect of someone vomiting. It's a flunk out's nightmare when our DC rejects become teachers at Dean Egghead's Academy of Superheroes. Oh, sounds like a parody of the X-Men. In fact, it is a parody of the X-Men. I bet a lot of, you know, see there's Iceman and you got the Beast. Hmm. X-Men parody that most people don't even know about. And um, they um, tried to bring back the Justice Society and, and here, uh, just like they, I mean, they done with The Flash, that's what started the Silver Age. Showcase number four, right? Here's the Creeper, Steve Ditko. Number 91, Manhunter 2070. Are you kids? And there's no kids. That, I mean, uh, younger people out there, they're going to live to see 2070, but back in the 60s, that seemed like a very distant year in the future. Um, okay. Then I go to Silver Surfer number 7, because I don't have Silver Surfer number 1. Or anything close to that. There, number eight. Oh, I got some more. Um, but as I always say, I was always buying a lot of different things. I was never just buying only comics. If I had only just bought comics, I would have a better collection. This collection you're seeing is not world class by any means. Um, I just have uh, always been kind of scattered. I think I was watching Four Color Fossils last night, and they started. They mentioned me. They said that you know you start collecting this and that, and then you, pretty soon you've got so much stuff that you gotta move into some big house, you know, for it. Um, but yeah, yeah. Oh, but no. I said I'm not going to say, but yeah, I'm going to say, but but no, or therefore, yes. I, I can't be one of those. No, it's not but yeah, it's so yeah. That's the expression that everyone is using now. Having said that, so yeah. It's kind of cool. Oh, but why were they doing oh, Okay, I'm going to have really not Brand X in here. Doesn't matter, who cares? Here's our love story. Isn't that great? Look at that. Looks like a Spider-Man comic of that great John Romita art. What else is in here? Why, it's Patsy Walker. Girls would have to sit that way to be near the telephone, but now 
everyone has cell phones, so you can walk around, go wherever you want while talking. But back then, you had to contort yourself into comfortable positions to stay by the landline that was plugged into the wall. Yes, indeed. The Phantom Stranger, look at this uh, gothic looking horror. This was in the time where just about every comic on the newsstand was horror related because the comics coded relaxed and allowed horror in, so everything was horror. This is uh, in the 60s when DC tried to bring back Plastic Man which didn't work, at least not, but then they tried to bring back Plastic Man around 1976, yeah, so, no, <laughs> no, it's, 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 so, yeah, so, um, it shouldn't be so, no, it should be so, nah, it's, it's so, nah, so, nah, I've got to be cool like these other uh, YouTubers or I'll never get to thousands of subscribers. So you've got to start talking like a moron in order to uh, appeal to the average YouTube viewer. Uh, so what will I send to CGC next? Let's see. So that's not Brand X to Star Spangled. It was Star Spangled War. I moved that. Didn't yeah, so it's showcase and it goes to last thing in this box is uh Stanley and his monster. Notice how much that looks like an Archie kind of um special here, especially in this beat up issue. See how that looks like an Archie masthead logo. Trade dress for those of you who like these things. Trade dress. All right. What else do I need to file? Fantasy masterpieces and a Hulk and some metamorphos. Wait. Strange tales. Uh, strange adventures, I mean. Oh my gosh. I gotta get some of these boxes back against the wall. It's starting to get insane here. And I could hear the hurricane winds. I can hear the rain buffeting the window. It's getting worse and worse as Hurricane Greta is approaching. Ooh, this is Metal Men to Plastic Man. Would that, that might be what I need. Or is it? Not for, for not for those. Metamorpho would be in this box, wouldn't it? Marvel's Metal Men. No, it goes. No, this is not the box I need. Okay. Um, Spangled to Submariner. Oh, here's Strange Adventures. That's what I need. Um, here's Strange Adventures 183. But what was I putting in here? Oh, this one. This is Gigantic Strange Adventures, but it's still the same comic. This is 230. Here's, um, here's 229, the issue right before it. And then 
it goes from Strange Adventures to Strange Tales, the Marvel comic. Is there anything else that needs to go in there? I don't think so. Put that over here. Adventure to amaz Amazing Spider-Man. Okay. This, this box. This box is Marvel Tales. These boxes are just, you know, these decorative boxes are, you know, they look cool and everything, but they, uh, they aren't very functional because um, you can't write on them. But, you know, I can look at it and spot that it's got Spider-Man on it. Oh, and that's where I have my Marvel Tales comics. I'm trying to get to his... Oh, this is Gold Key and Dell. <clears throat> okay, but well that's going to be good because I have some Gold Key books to file. Um, this starts with Huckleberry Hound and goes to uh, the Phantom. I need to write it on the box, though. So how are you guys doing on this wonderful? Are you guys uh, being buffeted by hurricanes or tornadoes? Here's, it's hard to breathe there on the East Coast. If any of you are you out there, um, I think there's a... Didn't they start a whole bunch of fires all along the eastern part of Canada? And then the smoke's coming down onto the East Coast and making it very hard to breathe in New York and uh, Washington, D.C. And so, okay, Dell. Huckleberry Hound to, I just told you you shouldn't do this, but I'm doing it. Huckleberry Hound to Pink Panther. I'm doing it anyway, because I'm a total moron. Huckleberry Hound to the Pink Panther. Yes, indeed. All right, so that's, we'll file something into that. Okay, what am I, I'm needing an M box. Marvel Collector's Item Classics. Charlton, box one, Charlton, box two. Metal Men did not grind back. Marvel's Collect. What am I needing to put in again? Metamorpho. Marvel's Collector's Items Class. If that's House of Mystery to Marvel's Collector's, and this is, that can't even be. That doesn't even make any sense. These labels are incorrect. Oh. Too many severed hands around here, man. Look, it's my only slapped comic. It's a 5.0. Now I'm a real comic collector. I I didn't slap it in my defense. Okay, Aquaman to Avengers. Let's move that down here. House of Mystery to Marvel Collectors on Classics. Is that accurate? Flash to Hulk. No, to Inferior 5. Man, that's completely incorrect, man. This box. Oh. It was, it was on the wrong way. I need to put an X on this side of the box. 
and then flash to inferior five. I just went through this box a little while ago. I don't think I need to put anything in here. Oh, there was a Hulk book I needed to put in. It's a fake Hulk book that, you know, Harlan Ellison uh, wrote the story. It's a fake uh, J.C. Penny 140. It looks exactly like it, though, so be careful. You know, if you see it bagged and boarded, you could be buying a fake. If it's got this on the back, it's fake. You need to, if you're buying a Hulk 140, you need to take it out of the bag because it could be one of these J.C. Penny reprints. Now, these J.C. Penny reprints aren't worthless, but they aren't valuable like the original issue. Um, and I think I have the original issue. Um, I just love this cover, the Hulk fighting the glob. Okay. One. Thirty-seven. Oh, look at this great cover. Uh, a lot of Marie Severin art in these. Um, One thirty-nine, and then I got a one forty-two. But I thought I had the real thing. There's one forty-three. I think I do have the real thing, but I'm not seeing it now. Okay, so that's that. We got a Hulk. We're done. Okay. So this box says. This is Inferior 5, Justice League, Kid Cold Outlaw, Marvel Collector's Item Classics. Um, the books I'm needing to file are in the M and N area, so this is not what I need. Oh, Battle Men, Metal, oh yes. They'd be in this box. I, all right, I found them. I found it. Finally, I found what I'm looking for. <laughs> now I've lost it again. Oh, here it is. How are we doing on time? 48 minutes in. <clears throat> okay. Now, oh, but Marvel, this Marvel family, fake Marvel family, needs to probably go in that. Okay, so I'm putting in Metamorpho. Metamorpho number two. This is that artist, that female artist I was telling you, Ramona Fraden, that I really love. And uh, she's still around. So, here's Metamorpho number one. And I just got this number two. But it looks like I already, oh, I thought I checked, but I already had a number two. But... All right, now I've got two copies of number two. I'm going to be cool like all of you guys that have 17 copies of every issue. Okay, then I go to number seven. That's very disappointing. Um, wait, what is this one? Oh, this is 17. I need to get those other metamorphos. I've got a book that reprints these issues. There's number nine downstairs. I'm pretty sure I do. Nine. Here's ten. Then I'm missing several issues. Here's sixteen. Another sixteen. And then here's another seventeen. So I just replaced. 
Okay, here's a fake mystery in space uh, that just came out recently. It's one of these... I have to keep thinking what they call them. Facsimiles. It's um, immediately distinguished by the 399. Uh, it's got the original ads, but then they've got a UPC code. You know, you can tell the difference. If you can't... If you can't tell the difference, you're probably not interested in this. If you like Mystery in Space and Adam Strange, then you're a different kind of collector. Uh, you know, the, the type of people that are into the movie characters and Deadpool and Venom and Sp whatever, Spawn, they, they're not going to uh, know the difference. or But then they're not going to care because they don't care about this. This is 75. Here's a... <laughs> these are so great. This is a real issue 96. That is real legitimate stuff. Oh, this character was great. His name is Ultra the Multi-Alien. Um, 108. These covers are just wild and insane. Um, oh, here's the first New Gods. Okay, so um, I don't have a lot of these Mystery in Spaces because I, I can't really explain it. I just... I've, whenever I found them in, in the real world, I bought them, but I don't see them that often. You don't see them in comic stores. Here's a wonderful cover, number 90. And another incredible cover. This is just one of the great covers. Uh, that's 80, 82. So... This is 78, and I assume the reason this was reprinted is that the first appearance of Adam Strange could could be. Oh, the book that, one of my favorite books of all time. Uh, what the Inferior Five, what they're trying to do at DC um, was imitate this book from Marvel, not Brand F. Um, it's a parody book. It's done like the old EC Mad. They they make fun of comics. They make fun of the Marvel characters, the DC characters, uh, even the Charlton character. I mean, uh, they they make fun of the Thunder Agents from Tower. They make fun of uh, Archie. Uh, they even have the the EC horror host appear in one of the later issues. Um, and some of the, the talent that worked on it actually worked on the original. There's another, I have several copies of issue one on the original uh, Mad in the 50s. Um, but it's great. Marvel had, uh, yeah, there, were, there were these commercials on television in the 60s where they, um, they would compare, let's say, uh, this, this lady is soaking her laundry in... Dawn dishwashing uh, uh, detergent. And this lady is washing hers in Brand X. You know, because we're not even going to tell you the name of the competition. We'll just call them Brand X. And so there were a lot of commercials where they, they didn't want to give publicity to the other company. So they call I have several copies of this one, too. This is a book whenever I see it and it's cheap, I buy it because it's, I can't leave it behind because it's, it's like... It's, like, precious to me. Anyway, they would call the competition Brand X. So Marvel started in their bullpen page referring to DC as Brand X. Like a parody of Brand X. Uh, making, you know, Brand X, but Brand X. Like they're vomiting. Ugh. So this comic is not Brand X. In other words, we're not DC. That's what they're saying. We're not DC. We're Marvel. We're not Brand X. You know, the title is a little confusing when you see it if you don't know all the, know why they're calling it that. Marie Severin, one of my favorite artists. Uh, I've got just copies and copies of the same one. My favorite, <laughs> I must have five copies of that one. This one has a Daredevil parody and an X-Men parody. 
and a Submariner parody. Yeah. Um, this is a really good uh, Spider-Man wedding issue and the parody of the Inhumans. But my favorite issue, I think, is where they do the parody of the origin of the Fantastic Four and a parody of Superman. It's brilliant. Brilliant stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This was good stuff. Not brand X. This is the issue. Well, sometimes they'd parody even movies that were out, like Bonnie and Clyde. Uh, towards the end, they started making it a giant size book. This is a great uh, cover. Just fantastic. One of the great covers. And then they had a King Kong issue, and then they had one after this that had Frankenstein. That's uh, that little German guys from Laugh-In. Okay, so Metal Men did not brand deck in that box. And now all I have to do is file this Nick Fury. If I could find an in box that has ends, but I've gotten a lot of stuff. Uh,